Hi, how are you? This is week 15 and the prompt word is beach. And today we're going to do something that I absolutely love drawing and painting. It's a small series of mine which I haven't really done a lot of since I started participating in posting the social media and making videos. A small series of illustrations inside jars and bottles which I named Life in a Jar. I first started it about 2017, maybe late 2016, but I don't really have precise dates. It's just sort of grown over a while. It's usually like a cabin in a swampy area or like you're looking into the jar and it's like a paused scene like a ship on the water or maybe a split screen where you're looking below and above water or like the sky. They're really fun and it's really nice to do all the little details if you have time. And these illustrations paired with the prompt this week really well. It was actually quite nice to sketch and do some brainstorming and I had a lot of fun drawing these sketches and designing these environments. They turned out better than my last few prompts anyway. And as usual I did do a character just to make sure I'm always practicing character design from whatever prompt I'm doing. And uh, for these illustrations I'm using uh, what's left of some hot press paper that I bought, but I don't know why I always say that I bought, it's not like I nicked it. Um, uh, but it's a little too lightweight for me, it's only 90 pounds or 200 GSM. It's very easy to pick up the layers underneath even if you dry it with a hairdryer. There isn't enough paper density to soak up the water that I put down. I love hot press paper but it's just too lightweight for me. So this one is my least favourite. I think it's going back to the hot press paper. It loses that beautiful texture that you get from cold press. I much preferred the sketches I did for this one. So they look like a cool post-apocalyptic world in ruins and covered by sand which always seems to be the case in apocalyptic worlds, just sand everywhere. And about halfway through my camera died and of course I didn't realise and still didn't realise well into the third illustration. So the first half of the sunken boat painting is nowhere to be found. I was going to throw it out and just get rid of the footage, but I thought I'll just turn it over and try again on the other side, which worked out pretty good because I did a perspective beach scene, like one point perspective, I think. I didn't do a whole lot of detail in it, I just did some shadowy fish and I think there's an octopus down the bottom, but it doesn't look like an octopus. I was just trying to push another painting in while I had time, but I loved the walls on either side, it looks like it's in a fish tank or something. The one with the sunken boat is on 300 GSM or 140 pounds cold press paper. It has a really nice texture, texture to it. And I've been struggling with the cold press paper I've been using at the moment. It's, I think it's Reeves and it's very, very hard and it's really hard to do the line work. The pen just goes in little divots and runs off on its own so I've been doing lots of lineless work on that. But this one is Fabriano. It was such a nice experience using it, even with the cheaper watercolours that I'm using. The colours show up much better and they look more vibrant than usual. This one is probably my favourite, but I am a bit partial to textured paper. And by adding depth to the bottom half of the water, it just made it look so good. Uh, it was a bit of Prussian blue and... Oh, what is with all of the bin trucks today. Thank you for your service bin truck people, but it's really loud right now. Anyway, so it was usually Prussian blue and sap green to make a nice turquoisey blue colour for the water. And just by adding some more shadows underneath the boat it made it look like it was actually underwater, which is always what you want to do when you're doing a water scene. Keep adding depth so it gets darker as it goes down. So thank you so much for watching and keep drawing.